This is Mike Quigley, Shogun Oriental Arts. We're going to do our continuation on Chinese ivory. And I've got a few more examples here that I think you would enjoy seeing. Uh, ivory in general uh, normally is uh, from elephant ivory. That can be both African and Indian elephants. Uh, the tusk itself is generally a follicle type of uh, hair. So that's kind of how those things form. Uh, dominantly you'll see the males with the biggest tusks and the females with the smallest tusk. Those are harvests pretty much out of uh, India and uh, Africa, most of which has been outlawed, but they still do it anyway and kill them and slaughter them. Send or sell the stuff to China who does the major carvings and other countries and uh, there you go. So anyway, let me show you a couple of examples on it. Here are two what the Chinese call foo dogs or guard dogs and the detail work on these guys is really phenomenal well carved and this will be the example for lead on all pieces of carved ivory detail 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 the more detail you see and the better that the quality of the detail is the better the ivory is going to be some of them can be signed by the artist and a lot of them are not signed by the artist uh, we'll move now to this piece which is a carved piece uh, of ivory. You can see even here it has a slight curvature to it which is probably an Indian or a female tusk. Not positive but that's usually what you see in these things. This is a Kuan Yin and uh, she's sitting on her lotus pad with a lotus in her hand and uh, again the detail work is really 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 phenomenal. Uh, and the, and the best quality is going to be everywhere, back, front, everywhere. And for people, you want to look at the hands, the nose, and the face. That's where the detail is going to really be seen. And we've got another one over here, which is like a long gourd that has been carved out with uh, deities on it, and uh, trees, and a uh, little bit of everything. It's the kind of piece that uh, gets kind of overworked. I don't enjoy these pieces as much, but... Uh, both of these pieces, the one I just showed you and this one, are in the 20th century. They were probably done at the turn of the century last, 1905, 1915, who knows. But uh, they don't date them. So that's what that one is. And uh, here's a piece that is a silhouette carving of a ivory tusk. And you can see that it is actually curved. So that would be the outside edge of the actual tusk once they cut all the other stuff out of it and so these are not as common you don't see as many of these because it takes up a beautiful portion of something that could have been carved into a solid form so when they're done when you find them they're usually pretty good and the detail work on this is very good the last thing we have is another solid piece this thing is solid and heavy very dense so this was designed to be a I guess a snuff bottle uh, with a beautiful, beautiful carving on the back side of it with some probably poetry on there in the upper right hand corner. Then on the other side, we've got the same kind of thing, just a couple of figures and whatnot. This one is probably signed right here with a signature and then a red seal, which tells you that that's the artist's seal. Most of them had a seal, uh, like all artisans in general, had a, a seal of some kind. And this little piece has a top on it that screws off. And this is uh, for uh, snuff, a little snuff spoon. But this is a pretty large piece. So, again, these you do not see that often because uh, you just don't see it. Uh, the quality of the ivory, when you look at most ivory, it will have some variations in color tone. And not always. Some are just white, white, white. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of what you see. And uh, those are good examples of the, of the Chinese uh, ivory pieces.